Hey guys, it's Joe. Um, in response to several requests, I want to do a little thing here on um, radiation detection equipment uh, for a post-nuclear war environment and calibration thereof. Uh, in the link below, I've put uh, space below. I've put a link to a company in Texas that will calibrate these meters for ninety dollars, and that includes the return shipping cost. You ship it to them with a check for ninety bucks and your contact info, and they will calibrate it and ship it back to you. Um, so uh, the question becomes whether or not to get your meter calibrated. And um, uh, I'll, I'll get into that with each each of meter. Basically there are two kinds of meters that you would want for a post-attack environment. Type number one is the survey meter. See there's my calibration label. Um, survey meter uh, it uses an ion chamber this is a CDV 717 which is my favorite version of the survey meter because you can take the ion chamber and you can stick it outside and run it with a long wire into your unit and tell keep track of the radiation outside of your space where you've taken shelter um, the uh, the survey meter will measures higher levels of radiation like you are likely to encounter in a post-attack environment. And I have had numerous people tell me, oh, survey meters are useless. Um, by the time it reads anything, you're already dead and stupid things like that. And that is just absolute crap nonsense. Um, for a post-attack environment, a good survey meter is your most important radiological tool. Um, you know, the, these will start registering at about a tenth of a rem or even you know five hundredths of a rem, um, and you know not that precisely, but you know it'll start registering at, at very low levels, and um, you know in a post-attack environment you're going to be dealing in rems, not millirems or fractions of a rem. Um, so, uh, and the survey meters luckily are also cheaper on eBay. Um, so you get your survey meter and the first thing is you don't know if it's reading right which can be kind of important because if it's telling you there's one rem out there and actually there's ten um, you, you know that's not a good thing you might end up exposing yourself unnecessarily um, so you know to answer that question you know the ninety bucks if you've got it is well worth it just for your peace of mind you know it's reading right after it's calibrated but realistically, if it seems to be functioning right, if you can zero it and then you can go through the ranges and the needle doesn't, you know, go way up or anything, um, that kind of thing, if it seems to be working right, the chances are the calibration is probably good if nobody's been messing with it. Um, because, you know, once you calibrate these things, they tend to not get very far off. I sent in two of these recently and got them calibrated, and uh, uh, one of them was pretty much right on. They show you where it was and how much they adjusted it, and the adjustments are not within a range that it would have been dangerous to use the thing. Um, it would have given me close enough information. Um, the other one was off by a bit and um, in a couple of ranges, and it was off by a bit, I'm pretty sure, because I tweaked <laughs> the calibration things while exploring the thing and, and examining it and, and, and fidgeting around with it. So um, it probably was well calibrated before that. Um, but uh, in any case, I sent them in, got them calibrated, and, and uh, now I know I can rely on them. Um, so if your meter seems to be working okay, you're probably, considering the odds of us actually having a nuclear war, are fairly small, things like that, you know, you can you can use your own judgment about how tight your resources are. Um, so that's that's the survey meter. The Geiger counter. Um, this is a CDV 700 or a version thereof. Um, Geiger counters have a probe. The Geiger counter is a terrific thing, but it's less critical in a post-attack environment because. Um, the radiation levels it's reading are in smaller ranges. Um, 
and and also be you know which there's going to be radiation all over the place if these idiot politicians nuke everything um, and it's also um, less critical because this could theoretically be overwhelmed by an extremely high level of radiation and it might be telling you that everything is fine when in fact there are potentially lethal levels of radiation around um, so but what this is very useful for is um, okay let's say it's after the attack you've sheltered you know it's radiation levels drop which they drop very rapidly incidentally um, you start coming out of your shelter doing a little cleanup you know you're spending a little bit of time out um, and uh, you know, and then maybe your Aunt Sally shows up. Well, you might want to check Aunt Sally to make sure, because she's coming in from maybe a contaminated area to see how contaminated she is. And so you can compare Aunt Sally and her car and her possessions and everything to the radiation outside around you and see if she is hotter than, um, you know, than the other stuff. And say, you know, Aunt Sally, before you come near the house, we need to wash you off and we need to wash your clothes, you know, that kind of a thing. And... The reason for that is, it's not that it's dangerous to be standing next to Aunt Sally, um, but it's that the dust, the radioactive fallout that she has on her, on her clothes, on her whatever, you don't want to be breathing that, you don't want to be eating it as much as possible. You want to limit consuming it into your body as much as possible. And um, so this will mostly be useful for finding hot spots where you need to clean something up or you need to pile some dirt on an area. and um, you know, for that kind of thing, long after the fact, okay? Um, not that useful for actually keeping you alive, per se. Um, now, as far as, as these go in calibration, if you look in your instructions, there inside there is a little calibration pod that you can tweak a little bit. And you can set this thing on X1, which is one time, and I'm going to turn this off, and, um, and you can adjust it using... Oh, open the shield, you have a little shield here, open the shield and then place the center part of the exposed probe over your check source, okay, like so, and you should get a max reading of somewhere between 0.2 and 0.4, you know, somewhere in that range. And um, I say somewhere in that range because it's... Uh, it's hard to say because these check sources, they use different materials for the check source and they have different decay rates. And some of these meters have been around for 20 years, some of them have been around for 40 years, some maybe 60 years, you know. Um, and so it's hard to say exactly how low your check source may have decayed to. It may only be one quarter the strength it was originally. So just as a guideline, somewhere in that range. now. That means you're not getting super precise readings, but again, you don't need super precise readings, and these meters aren't that precise anyway, and um, uh, and radiation is more complicated than that. There's lots of different kinds of radiation you might be picking up and things like that. So you put all that together, and really it's not that critical that this be that precise. It's just kind of critical that it be basically seem to be functioning and that it give you some notice. Um, now this one has a, uh, I got a little speaker on it, um, which is, you know, pretty useful. It makes it audible. And if you were moving around, um, traveling somewhere, you know, uh, that would be kind of good because then you could just be carrying this like this and it would serve as a warning if you went into a hot area, it would start chirping. See, I'll get this I get this near the check source, and it starts ah, radiation, you know. Um, so you can kind of calibrate these yourself and get them close enough to where they work fine. And I don't really see any real need to send it in and get it calibrated if it seems to be working properly and if it responds to the check source like that and stuff. Um, you can save the 90 bucks, you know, for nuclear survival purposes. Um, there are, you know, where to adjust that pot, that'll be in the instructions. If you can't find the instructions for your exact unit, if you don't have them with it, you can find them on the internet. Um, there is a second adjustment in there, which is the uh, voltage for the probe tube. 
and um, that's a thousand supposed to be set at I believe a thousand volts. Don't mess with that. And the reason for that is if the unit seems to be working, that's fine already. And then the second thing is you can't adjust that thousand volts with an ordinary voltmeter. It's an electrostatic voltage, and you need an electrostatic voltmeter, which very few people have. I'm an engineer, and I don't have one um, to set that. So if you start messing with that, you could screw your thing up and cost yourself 90 bucks to send it in. Um, so anyway, that's the gist of it. Um, Beyond that, a few storage techniques. It's important to keep these things dry, especially the survey meters need to be very dry inside, otherwise they start acting funky and giving you funky readings. So keep a desiccant pack inside the unit. The units just open up easily. Keep a desiccant pack inside there and um, to keep the electronics dry in there, and that will extend their life. If you see one for sale and you see signs of corrosion and stuff like that, that's a bad sign. Stay away from it. Um, you don't, you don't, you don't want that. Um, the, uh, the things are good and robust and if you keep them clean and dry, they will, you know, probably outlive you. Uh, they're, you know, tough as nails. Um, a, a few other purchasing tips on the survey meters. Now this is what I have been told. I can't vouch for it myself, but it seems like reliable sources. There are three types of these meter faces. One of them, the black metal rim is domed. Um, another kind is like this one, where you have just plastic in the middle and the metal black metal rim is flat and outside of it. And then there's a third type where the plastic covers the whole thing, the black the center part, and it also covers the black metal rim. I have been told that the ones with the domed rims and the ones with the plastic over the whole thing are more fragile and less reliable. These meters will tend to break if the thing gets banged around and you're less likely to be getting a good one if you buy it. I uh, don't know if that's true but I bought two of the ones with the flat um, metal outside that looked in good shape and both of them work perfectly. Um, so just some general, general guideline you might want to keep in mind. Let's see, keep them clean, keep them dry. Do not store batteries in them. Keep, you're going to need D-cell batteries. They take D-cell batteries. So you want to keep batteries available to you in case of emergency, but don't store batteries in them. Um, and, uh, and really, that's about it. So I hope that's been useful you know, to you. A good calibrated survey meter. The calibration will probably be good for the rest of your lifetime if you don't mess around with the thing. Um, is a really good tool for surviving uh, you know, post-attack environment and a Geiger counter is a useful tool um, also for that but less critical. Uh, for things like a rate, you know, leakage from a radiation from a nuclear plant or a dirty bomb or something like that, that's probably going to be at lower levels of radiation and a Geiger counter would probably be a good navigation tool for that. I've babbled on for over 13 minutes now. Sorry so long, I try to keep them shorter, but it's what it took. I uh, hope you found this helpful. Joe out.